All right, how are we going to solve this question? I'm going to ask um, Dan to help me. Yeah? So, let's name this as box calculation question. Now we're going to do the answer. All right, Dan. What are the types of conductors I've given you in this question? Number eight or ninety, and number ten or ninety. Number eight, how many of them? Seven. And then number ten, how many of them? Four. Perfect. Let's go to table twenty-two. What's volume of one number eight? Uh, Forty-five one. Multiply that by 7, my dear. What do you get? 315.7. 315.7 yeah. milliliter. Okay. What's for this one? Number 10, how many? What's the volume? 4. Hmm? 36.9. 36.9 ml. Four of them multiplied with numbers here. What did you get? 147. 147.6 milliliters. When I add both numbers, what am I going to get? 458.3. ml. Okay. All right. Multiply this by decimal 061 so we can find inch cube. Remember on the first day I showed you XXX page of your code book? Right? Yeah. 1 ml is equal to decibel 061 inch cube. Yeah. We have to convert into inch cube. Why? Because the dimensions are given in inches. Okay? So multiply this number. Give me my answer. 28.6 inch cube. Now the four choices I gave you was 2 by 2 by 2. What is 2 times 2 times 2? Length, width, and height represents volume. Right? L times W times H. So 2 times 2 times 2 is 8. 2 less. 4 times 4 times 4 is 64. Perfect for this installation. Question is, a point, is that point zero? Six, six one. Okay. You're going to go to XXX page of your code book here. The conversion is written right no, there. Sometimes when someone's writing it, Decimal 061. Yeah, it looks like that. It's not hard, right? We don't even have to go bigger than this, so who cares what's the volume for C and D? Yeah. It's going in That's increasing plenty. order anyways. It's plenty. Well, normally we just say go back over. Right? Yeah, I didn't know how to do that. Now you know, guys. Okay, last question. If you could get this, then you got one more mark in the exam. Anybody not clear on how I did it? Yeah, I got a long drive. So guys, for yes. all the stuff I've taught you, anything that is not clear before we finish our class or our whole course. Last 40 hours of me grinding information in your head. Anything that you feel is not clear before I let my rock stars go. I got your phone number. You got my phone number, so you can always call me. Good? <laughs> But before you go guys, one thing I want to be very clear on, okay? My job is not done until you write the exam. You can email me or you can phone me. But please don't phone me 90% of the time I'm in my class when you call, okay? So easiest way to get in touch with me is through an email. You must have seen when I'm teaching, I'm still in front of my emails the whole time, right? So, but don't please send me 10 emails with 10 questions. Because imagine, like I teach all over Canada, and I have tons and tons of students, so if one student sends me 10 emails with 10 questions, I might have per day at least 500 emails to respond to. Right? So be patient, do 10 questions in that email. Keep adding, whenever you can find an answer to a question, make a notepad, write down that question number 10 on exam four, I could not do. So just keep adding. Once you have a list of 10 questions, create an email and send it to me, okay? I will do my best to help
help you out until you write the exam. Anything else before we finish our course? How did you like your class? Anything I could do different for the next time? I need feedback from you, but I'll give it to you. I know you guys are rushing. Two more minutes of your time, I'll let you guys go. But before we finish the course, anything else I can help you guys out? Section 12, section 8, any questions on anything? I absolutely enjoyed teaching you guys. You were an amazing class, so thank you. Now I'm going to give you a feedback form to fill. Once you fill this form, we take a photo as a group and then you are out of here. I know you guys have long drives. I gotta take the flight too, but we gotta get this done. Okay? Thank you.